Hi again, and thanks for joining me back. In this lesson, you don't need to do anything. Just watch and understand the difference between traditional and digital animation. Let's start with learning what traditional or frame-by-frame -frame animation is. The same animation they used to make Disney movies in the past. I will use Photoshop software to demonstrate how to create a frame-by-frame -frame animation. Imagine that we are now working with actual pages on the desktop. So I have one page, which is a white page. This panel represents the timeline. By the way, the timeline is the main thing differentiating graphic design and animation. In graphic design, we work on one frame. In animation, we work on many frames that we connect in the timeline. In our case, we have eight frames that are connected on the timeline. If I press play, it will take the time indicator, that blue line, to go from zero to one for exactly one second. By the time we get to one second, we will pass eight frames. So now, let's see how this works. I will zoom out a little bit for convenience. And now I'm going to create my first frame, so I'm going to create a blank page. Shorten it, so that it only appears on the timeline for one frame. I'm going to select my brush, and draw a circle on this page. I will draw the sphere in this location on the page. Now move one frame, create another page. And I will draw the same circle in a slightly different position here. And so I will continue to do until I reach the end of my timeline. So now I have eight drawings and the position of the sphere is drawn in a different position. So I have one second, which consists of eight drawings or frames. And if I press play, I will have an illusion that the ball is moving from here to there. And that's why it's called frame by frame animation. Because we draw the ball in each frame or page. Awesome. So now let's move forward and learn about the most famous concept in animation. Keyframes. Let's try to understand what keyframes is. I will delete the layers I created. And now, I'll explain how they used to work at Disney when making movies using frame-by-frame -frame animation. The main animator would come and draw the beginning of the animation and the last point of the animation. And the frames he drew were called keyframes, meaning the main frames. The rest of the drawings would be drawn by secondary animators. And the frames they drew are called in-betweens. That is frames that are between the main keyframes. Great, so now you know what keyframes is. Let's take the principles and concepts we learned and understand how they work in digital animation in After Effects. So this is the After Effects software, and like Photoshop, I have the timeline here, and there is a white page on it that is locked. The duration of this timeline lasts for one second and includes eight frames. In the eighth frame, we complete one second of animation. So now, I will create a sphere. This layer has been created here in my timeline, but unlike in traditional animation, I don't need to cut this layer, open a new one, draw another sphere, and so on. This is what we did in Photoshop while creating frame-by-frame -frame animation. We drew frame-by-frame -frame separately. In After Effects or digital animation, we don't need to draw frame after frame. We create the sphere once, then set keyframes to a certain parameter. In our case, it is the position parameter. As the primary animators did in frame-by-frame -frame animation, when they decided where the first and last keyframes would be located, in After Effects, we will do the same and create keyframes, the first and the last. So, at the second zero on the timeline, I set the sphere's location to be here and create the first keyframe. Instead of drawing the sphere, I created the first keyframe. Now I need to go to the end of the timeline, 
with the time indicator and drag the sphere to the location I want it to be at the end of the animation. I don't need to draw the in-betweens. After Effects creates them for me automatically. And if I press play, we will see the sphere moving from the first keyframe to the last. And that, my friends, is the difference between frame-by-frame -frame animation and digital animation. In frame-by-frame -frame animation, we need to draw all the frames manually. In digital animation, we need to create only the main keyframes, and then the software produces the in-betweens automatically. So we created an animation that consists of 8 frames per second, and now let's learn what it means to change the frame rate and change our animation to 24 frames per second. First, let's understand the idea of frame rates using traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation. So, I will delete the frames and change the frame rate to 24. That means, to complete one second on the timeline, we need to produce 24 frames and not 8 as before. So to create the same animation as before, I will have to draw 24 drawings. In After Effects, it is much simpler. All it need to do is go into the composition settings and change the frame rate to 24. There is still one second of animation, but this time it will take 24 frames to complete one second of animation. And here is the difference between what 8 frames per second animation looks like, in comparison to 24. Now let's change the frame rate to 60 frames per second and see the differences. The more frames per second, the smoother the animation will look. But it comes with a price because After Effects now needs to create more in-betweens, it will be more difficult for the software and the computer to display the animation. Therefore, there is no need to work at 60 frames per second all the time. The standard frame rate in the world is 24, 25, and 30. 60 frames per second is usually used when we want to create animations for apps and websites. All right, for now, I will bring the frame rate back to 24. Awesome! So after we understand what frame rate means, let's learn another concept we use in motion design that is originally created in traditional animation. The concept is Easy Ease. Easy Ease is a concept we use in After Effects all the time, so it is important to understand where it comes from and what it means. For this example, I go back to work on 8 frames per second and create the animation of the sphere again. So let's work using the main keyframes, with the first keyframe being here and the last here. Let's change the names. And now I will draw the in-betweens. So I will create another frame and draw the ball at more or less the same distances from each other. We have some animation. The distances between the spheres are the same. And now, let's create the same animation. Only this time, I will draw the distances of the in-betweens at different distances. So I will delete those for now and create a new one. I will draw the second frame here. The third here. The fourth here and the fifth here, then the sixth and seventh. Let's see how it looks. As you can see now, at this point, it feels like the ball picks up speed and moves faster. We have created a certain ease. This happens because I drew them at a large distance from each other. The closer the frames are to each other, the slower the animation will appear. The greater the distance between the frames, the faster the animation will appear. Look at it compared to the animation without easing. Now let's understand how this principle works in digital animation, After Effects software. The distances between the frames are shown in After Effects in this way. 
The distances are exactly the same. So the animation looks like this. The sphere moves in a linear motion. So let's change the distances between the frames. Instead of drawing them as before, we will use a function called easy ease. And here, we see that the distances between the frames have changed. I will exaggerate the distances between the frames even more with the help of the graph editor. You don't need to understand the graph editor for now. Just try to understand that good control of easing differentiate between an experienced animator and one just starting out. We will talk about this topic in depth later in the course. Now I will increase the distance between the frames by moving the handles I have here. And so I know the ball will pick up speed at this point in the animation. So now I have a small distance between these frames, and here I have a huge distance, just like how we drew the distances in a frame-by-frame -frame animation. So let's see how the animation will look now. The sphere moves in an easy ease way. This produces a more exciting movement compared to the animation without ease. So if you are curious about motion design and brave enough to learn something new, I invite you to a fun learning experience called Design in Motion.